Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test. We are here in Oregon for a very special reason and that's right behind us. Vans Aircraft, we're here at the shop, we're here at the facility. We're super excited to meet everybody inside and also take a look at what's going on. So we're gonna go in here and take a tour. You guys follow along. It's gonna be fun. We literally just left your awesome people and we came into your warehouse and my jaw is on the floor right now. Everything basically for the aircraft is right here. In the warehouse, yeah, essentially everything that you need to build all of our airplanes from the RV3 all the way up through the RV14A, including the RV12IS yeah. like you all are building right here. So we're going to start in the warehouse and then we're going to make our way through the warehouse and into the factory and then probably into the RV12, the place where they build the flyaway RV12s, the yeah. ones that we finish here. But, but this, is the, this is the warehouse. So. Uh, and it's constantly changing inventory and uh, we have a team of craters that come in and they'll take the pick sheet and they go and the pick sheet tells them where all the parts are and they pull them on and verify it and then we have a wood shop that makes the wood crates um, just custom so they're I mean they're standard crates but they can also make them custom size when needed if you guys remember and stuff uh, we got to have these crates delivered to us a matter of fact a big set of them were delivered right when you and I were flying over and Dave yeah, was driving was, across the golf course funny. <laughs> we, we weren't excited at all <laughs> So again, the warehouse continues, right? Yeah. So here you can see quick build fuselages, for example. So if you order an RV-14 yeah. fuselage, you order it, if you order what's called the standard build kit or the regular yes. kit, all of these parts would not be assembled. Right. You would get the fuselage kit with just loose parts, yes. so to speak, and then you would start assembling it. If you want to order it as a quick build, then it comes to you in this stage. So we take the parts and we ship them to a partner company. We have two partner companies that we would ship them to where they do the assembly to this stage, then they send it back to us. Yeah. Uh, then we would create it up here, put the other parts that are needed, also part of the fuselage kit, they're not done yet, into the crate, and then we would send it to you and you'd start from this point right here. That's incredible. If I'm not mistaken, the plane that you got to fly with was this airplane right here. Right. Right. Yeah. The one, the first time, the first time we met, yeah. actually, I was, I happened to be out that direction and stopped by in the 14A. Yes. Uh, that East Coast 14A, and yeah, it was one of one of these guys. Incredible. Yeah, that was to see it, to one. see it like bare bones versus yeah. finished. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So that's the warehouse. Now we're going to go to the factory. Nice. So we'll do that. So again, most of our most of our uh, materials that we make here, not not completely. Most of them are sheet metal. We also do some machining, right? So we have a CNC, four different CNC machining centers here. And this is Casey, he's, he's our CNC department amazing manager guy. So, yeah. so that's his official title, amazing manager guy. I like that, that's a good title. So, so here's an example of where we start. They start with this piece of material that's been cut. Basically take one bar, cut it into two pieces. Okay. That will get loaded, right, in the mill, and it gets it gets milled and produced. But then when it's done, you know, you end up with bar that has holes in it and has this has the steps cut in it. Wow. We can find we can find some finished ones. Then they go out to be anodized. So you can see them actually right over here on the table. You can see examples of the bar like the one you're standing next to that's been milled and then goes out and it's anodized. So this machine is pretty cool. So we have machines that are like brand new technology. And then this machine is a Farnham machine, Farnham rolling machine. And what it does is you can see up here, it's literally twists the dials to get it set to where you want. It has an old electric motor that runs it, but it puts compound curves, big curves, big swoopy bends, if you will, in sheet metal. That's what it's for. So here's a piece of flat sheet metal that's already punched and already has all the holes in it going on the machine. And then what it will do is it's running a program, if you will, and you people will actually take these, this is like a World War II era machine. Yeah. They'll take these World War II era machines and then add CNC stuff controls to them in order because they work so well. Yeah, because as it's rolling, it can change the pressure and change the form. So it could be a long sweep and then a sharper one. Yeah, but this, this machine is like 1940s era. Incredible. And and it, it'll but, be it, for 20 but it years. works great. Yeah. Yeah. So the hydro press, right, the hydraulic press here. Okay. We have a set of form blocks, take the flat parts that are up here on the top shelf and place them on the form blocks on the guide pins for the tooling holes. And then what will happen is 
once those are all lined up, hit a button that goes in, the press comes down and presses it, comes back up and they slide back out and they've been formed around the form block. Now, do you have male and female form blocks like already established in there or is there a membrane that comes down? It's just a, it's just a, uh, a pad, if you will, that comes down. Yeah. Gets as much as 550 tons is what this is set up for, of, of power. Goes over, comes back up and it's been formed. So for example, this, this is the right hand, and we have a right hand and a left hand part here for this one. And this part is here. But this, this is the part, this is the reference part, right? Like an R0 part. And this is used for the purpose of comparing all the parts that are made as they're being made. So this is basically the standard by which is, they're judged, if you will. So this is kind of boggling my mind. On average, plane is could be a couple thousand parts. Would that be fair to say? Oh yeah. So a couple thousand parts, every part being made by hand, every part being checked individually by hand against the standard. And how many planes do you build right now? RV3 forward? How many different models? Yeah. Well, we got the RV3, the 4, there's the 66A, the 7, 7A, 8A, 8A, 99A, 10, 12, 14, and 14A. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. It's a lot. And every With the variance, those, it's a whole lot. And every one of those parts, individually cut out, individually inspected, I mean, that's, just think of that discipline. And you got great people that care about what they're doing. They're connected oh, that, yeah. to exactly what's going on. Versus we have the just most a, amazing people in the world here. I they're love just that. all around good folks that care about doing it really well and making it making it great. All right, so this is really cool. Talk about cool people here. Greg was just telling me you actually worked and you built for Team Flight and you built an RV12 and yep. now you're working here. Yeah. What's your name? My name's Nick. Nice to meet you, Nick. What are you doing, bud? Well, right now I'm just loading the tools in for the next job I'm running. So. Uh, the parts that we run you are the ones behind you right there. Incredible. It's uh, kind of a neat job. I'm going through Team Flight, actually getting to actually build the airplane, kind of seeing how it all comes together, actually seeing how the parts are made here. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's a whole different experience. I'm really enjoying it. Oh, that's incredible. A lot of times so. people are, you know, they think, oh, flying's the end goal. Building is really enjoyable. It is. Um, I'm hoping to start flying hopefully next spring. That's wonderful. That, that's the goal eventually. But yeah. For now, I'm at least getting to do something aviation related, and I really enjoy working here. I love that. I love that. So you guys can go from building airplanes to working on airplanes to manufacturing airplanes. You're a great example of that. Great to meet you. Good to meet Thanks you for too. your time. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. So these are the CNC punch presses. There's three of them here. The only thing you can't see on these machines that we're going to walk by now, so just be cognizant of that, is that there is a light gate, right? So don't walk through the invisible laser beam because it'll stop the machine. And ruin the part. Yeah. <laughs> no, it won't ruin the part. Oh, it'll good. just stop. Good. Good. <laughs> But, you, but you'll get the sideways look, you know, like, yeah. So basically, if you look on the machines, you'll see that there's racks of colored handles, and each tool gets lined up on the tool rack, and basically they're just hole punches, right? And it will rotate around 360 degrees. So you're doing this, and you bring this out, and the sheet gets moved under it, basically, and the punch, it punches down, and it will punch the hole through it, and the material falls out underneath, right? And so you can punch pretty much anything. So you could punch just that hole that looks exactly like that, maybe. You could also use this and punch multiple times to create whatever shape you want. So we have lots and lots of different tools. Everything as large as a two inch circle that can punch through quarter inch steel, uh, all the way down to little stuff like this that even punch even teeny tiny little holes and everything in between. So is everything from this point to what we saw, is this all of your manufacturing process then? Uh, the welding shop is upstairs here, welding shop, okay. so we have welding, and then through here we have the final assembly shop for RV12s. Okay, cool. Are we allowed to see that? Yeah, we're going to go there. Oh, wow. So the RV12, again, so the RV12 can be built as a kit, like yeah. you're doing, in which case it would be registered as an experimental light sport aircraft, or ELSA. We also take the kit and we have what we call the Aircraft Assembly Division or AAD for short. If you hear AAD, that's what that means. Okay. Um, and that team is dedicated to taking the kits and building finished RV-12s. So build it all up, paint it, fly it, do all the test cards and all the test flights and prepare it basically so that it can be used and flown home by the customer that's buying the finished airplane. And there's two buildings. So we have um, what, for lack of a better term, I'll just re refer to as primary assembly, and then we have final assembly. So basically, once it's been painted, 
The part's been painted, everything's coming together. That kind of happens in here. Mostly happens in here. Uh, so Trask actually has done all the coordination for the for the flying event uh, at the RC field on Saturday. So he's he's the guy. We're gonna have a lot of fun. So thank goodness for Trask. <laughs> so what department is this, Greg? So this is so we were just in aircraft assembly uh, division's final assembly shop, and this is the main shop, I guess. So when this is the work that's done here eventually makes it to final assembly. Okay. So this is where systems are done and then we'll, hope, we'll just yeah. show it to you. So. All right, so where we're seeing, we just got to see airplanes in their final production here, uh, but those come in pieces and this is where you guys do that. Exactly, so they come in as a, we call it a quick build assembly. So the RV-12, uh, generally you only build it as a standard build, you know, from individual parts, uh, but for our SLSA line, we have uh, quick builds come in the same way they'd come in for the other models of 14, 10, and so on. And we start from there. So you can see, you know, right there, pretty much a quick build airplane. We start doing a, an inspection from there, make sure everything is like up to snuff for our stuff. Uh, and then it rolls through each one of these uh, assembly stations. So we've got systems, firewall forward, cowling, tail cone joint, wing fit, and so on. Um, and we, we roll one in every, every 10 days or so. Wow. That makes a lot of sense based on what they're talking about, between two and three a month. You know, yeah. Depending on what they're doing. So now we're going to be building the RV-12 IS, and right now we're starting obviously with the tail and the rear cone assembly. That's kind of like what these pieces are over here, correct? Exactly, yeah. So we have, you can see we have racks around the shop for um, the stabilator, the vertical, the rudder. Um, those all come in as quick builds as well. Uh, so that's what you'll be building is essentially up to that quick build stage and then we just take it and finish it, fit all the fairings and assemble it. And then the fuselage gets mated right there with the tail cone. Yeah, and you can see it's right in process. So this is a, an IFR version or we call it a NAVCOM version. Uh, so right now it's right in between. You can get a good look inside of yeah. um, all the cable, all the rudder and stabilator cables being routed, um, pedostatic lines, the nav antenna line. All that's being routed before it actually gets made and then it gets turtle deck skins on and the aft window and then gets masked up, inspected for paint. Incredible. I love it. And I think I heard, I was talking to the other gentleman over there and stuff, uh, you have an RV-12 IS that's pretty much going to be run or done by the end of the day here, ready for maiden. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, hopefully exactly. We'll, hopefully we'll get to see that. Yeah, cool. for Thanks, sure. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate yeah, you. Thank you. Thanks. So I thought these, these hangers here were the end of it. There's more? There's more to them? This hangar India right here is oh. also the end. So. Oh really? What are you guys doing here? So this is where our prototype shop and our demo hangar oh, and okay. our engineering department are located. So. so here you have, you know, in the demo airplanes department, this this airplane, uh, RV7A. So that's an RV7 over there, right? The red, air, red and white airplane, it's a tail dragger. This is an RV7A. It's the same airframe with a different gear configuration on it, really is the only difference. That's the tail dragger and this is the tricycle gear. So whenever you have an A model, it means that there's an option for that particular model, like the RV7, either RV7 tail dragger or RV7A A model. If there's only a tricycle gear variant, like the 12, and there's no tail wheel, then we just call it the RV12, or the RV12 IS in that case, or the RV10 is just a tricycle gear. So is the A variant always taking it to a tricycle gear, yes. or is it is, okay. Yeah. And the non-A is always a non-tricycle gear, if, assuming there's a variant for that model. This, this is our, this was actually RV7A number one, so this is serial number one. It was also RV7 serial number one. So this started life as a tail dragger and got updated okay. to be a nose dragger. Right, or a tricycle gear airplane, and so it happens to be both. Uh, this is serial number one. This is the first RB14 tail dragger. We also have the first RB14 tricycle gear, which is not here right now. It's actually out doing some training, I think. Okay. You know this RB12 IS? It's our our demo fleet RB12 we've, we've IS. We've so that, be familiar with that one. That one we we flew around in not too long ago, and then over here is the RB15, which is a uh, the engineering prototype. It's the only one in existence at this point, but so this this is the an engineering prototype is an airplane that the engineering team designs and builds for the purpose of proving uh, and validating design. Uh, this airplane was built in a way that maximizes the engineering team and the prototype shop team's ability to go through the airplane and make changes. So for example, the fuel tank is inside the airplane instead of in the wings, which is where it will be in the final airplane because that allows the most flexibility in making adjustments and changes to the wing during 
engineering prototype test fit fly phase and, um, and refining that design. A number of refinements have been made to the design. The tail's changed a few times. The stabilator, which is the horizontal uh, stabilator, full-flying stabilator, has been changed a couple of times. Flaps, ailerons, wings, the engine's been moved a little bit. The thrust line was changed. Uh, it has really super cool landing gear. That's, yeah, a one-piece, right? Well, no, it's not. It looks like a one-piece, but in reality, this gear has uh, four Shock Monster shocks, right? Dampening in and all the way out. Uh, that are inside the airplane. So sometimes on uh, backcountry airplanes, this is a backcountry airplane, this is the reason it's designed, you'll see the shocks on there, but they're kind of outside. Yeah. These shocks are inside, so there's no drag, they're all inside, um, and it allows about six inches of vertical travel on the wheel on, on either side, and it has two shocks independently, independent suspension for each leg, uh, and two shocks, you know, so you have some redundancy in there as well. And also another shock monster oil gas shock for the tailwheel that takes all the dampening and does a lot of dampening on the tailwheel and allows you to actually adjust the angle at which it's coming out depending on the size of tailwheel you have on it in order to maximize that effect as well. Oh, wow. And minimize minimize the stresses that are sent through the airframe. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken with the RV-15, you guys were kind of going off of a dual purpose. You wanted to have some stall characteristics, the ability to go in the back bush country, but you also didn't want to have an airplane that was incredibly slow flying from point A to point B. Right, so right? we talk about total performance total is the performance. term that we use at Vans okay. Aircraft to describe that. So we want to get for the mission, right, we want to be have as much performance on the top end as we can and the best performance that we can on the low end. So for this mission, that means being able to get off the ground and land short. It's not about slow so much as it is about short. That generally trans translates into a bit slower. Yeah. Um, but it's really about the net result that matters, right? It's not the stall speed that matters so much as it is just your ability to actually do the, to perform the mission. And on the high end, you know, it's like if I want to go to, if I want to go fly to Idaho, Idaho from here in Western Oregon and fly in backcountry and go land on, you know, grass strips or unimproved areas or whatever, you know, I, I prefer it if I could get there a little quicker. And so, you know, that matters. That you know, the top end speed matters. But um, this is a great performing airplane. It's a beast. Yeah. Um, it it uh, it climbs like crazy. Uh, it gets off the ground in a very short distance and stops in a very short distance. So. There's all kinds of nifty little details about this. Like on this one, on the stabilator, for example, the design engineers have built this with a removable leading edge, right? So you have all these screws in here. So instead of it being riveted on, you know, because I mean, you take this thing out, you know, out in the dirt and the rocks, you know, you're, yeah. you're gonna get dings in this thing. And so if you get dings in this thing, all you gotta do is you just take this thing off, pop a new one on and put the screws in and you're done. Wow. Right? I mean, just a few parts. That's a feature that is sort of very mission specific. You know, we don't do that on any of the other airplanes, but they don't need that. But in this case, if you're gonna go land on gravel bars and whatnot, then you're gonna be throwing some rocks eventually up into the leading edge of your tail. So that's what it's there for. No doubt about that. I'm yeah. seeing a lot of pull groups on this plane too. Is that gonna be the yeah. final thing? Yep, yeah. So pull, primary design is, is around pulled rivets with the, um, you know, it doesn't have to be pulled rivets. You could you could do it as a, uh, as a solid rivet airplane. Um, quite a bit more work to do it that way, but if somebody chose to, the, the, the design is taking into account the ability to do that. So it's, it's, it's an almost certain thing that that'll be an option for somebody if they were to choose to do it that way. Not 100% for sure, but that's, that's, it looks like that's the way it's gonna work out. All right, so we're all done with the factory here. Been so many great people, had a lot of fun, and wow, did we learn a lot. Now, something really cool we get to do, thanks to the good folks at Vans, is we actually get to do a meetup here in Oregon. We announced it. We're heading down there right now with the two RV12 ISs that we built in the back of the car. Our goal is to do some buddy boxing, some laughing, some fellowship. It's gonna be cool. Look at that. He's doing so good, I'm just literally like, which one are you? Oh yeah, there you go. I love I it. I feel like I'm cheating though, and it's level assist. But... <laughs> You're not, dude, sure. are you having fun? Are you flying? Oh yeah. yeah.
it, it like recovered. Awesome. It was like. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> friends we had an absolute blast at the meetup it was incredible to be able to fly with so many different people meet so many people from outside the country we really love getting to know our community from all around the country and all around the world and thanks to everybody that took the time out of their lives to be able to come down and have some fun with us now we captured so much more content than what you're seeing in this video right here if you download our free app you're gonna see every video channel that we have we have flight test tech channel we have flight test life and in that flight test life channel is where you're going to be able to see some long in-depth interviews especially with a really dear gentleman van himself we're all loaded up we're heading back to the airport it's time to head home all right friends once again we want to give a huge shout out and a big thank you to both greg and the amazing folks at van's aircraft we had an incredible time being able to go through their factory learn more about their incredible aircraft line but most of all meeting the people now, if you all don't know, we are going to be building our own Vans Aircraft RV-12 IS here over the next year to year and a half. That journey is starting right now. So if you guys want to be able to join us on the journey, check it out on our main content, but also download the app because we're going to have lots of extra cool features and content that we're going to be building around this journey. Thanks so much for being part of the Flight Test family, and we'll see you next time.